first it was uh, underground forest fires and the exploding rocks and now for some reason strapping a boat to the top of my car like no amount of straps will make me feel comfortable um, I think it's because the first time I ever strapped a canoe to my boat everyone like without fail is like yeah that's not going anywhere and then like by the time I got to Jesse's I was driving from my place to Jesse's to pick him up the canoe was on like two pads like I had four pads tied down the two the two in the back had flown off and the canoe is just teetering on the top of my boat or on the top of my car. I don't know how exciting this video is going to be. Um, Ontario opened up the parks again uh, after like, I don't know, two months, two or three months. And uh, I just, I was, I was shocked that, like, I went to the website, I was like, there's no way, because people were like, there was like bots buying up all the spots and everything, and there was people scalping, uh, camping permits, um, and to my surprise, they must have canceled all the reservations, like, preemptively, and then once they opened back up, they're all available, because like, everything was available, so I, like, panic booked just a single overnight trip, um, on my, my day off. So here we are, we're going. I am taking a kayak and there's a fire ban and also it's gonna be thunderstorming. So, like I'll try to get up to some stuff but I might be just sitting in my tent for a bit, but that's okay. I brought my camera and stuff, I'll see if I can get cool pictures. Anyway, check in later. straight into the wind right now. It's decently choppy, but it was calling for thunderstorms and it's not raining. And uh, I don't see any lightning or anything right now. So I think we're gonna be good to get to the campsite. kayak actually has a rudder, which, I mean, like, most kayaks have, like, a skeg, which is, like, a thing that you drop down from the bottom of the boat, it doesn't move, but it just keeps it straight, but, uh, there's foot pedals on the bottom right here, and it, it steers the kayak for you, and it's kind of a life saver right now. Look at all the pollen.
shore is just littered with pollen. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. It's awesome. been on uh, Okinawa before and I got on and I was like oh this isn't that big and then I just passed by like this one island and all of a sudden it just opened up and it was crazy it's really cool though Egg. Shh, So, this campsite actually looks really cool, um, but it also looks very buggy. The ones are really look buggy. Wow. 
Wow, this area is really beautiful. Oh man, you know what? You know what that is? That is a beaver dam and right behind it is running water. And you know where we're not gonna camp? We're not going to camp by running water because you know what spawns in running water? Black flies. So I'm out. There's no way. I'd rather take a gross windy campsite than black fly infested any day. This looks pretty cool. It's on the... Uh, oh, Jesus. It's on the... Uh, <laughs> shot. <laughs> Never mind. Fuck it. I'm camping here. I may just pop out like into the water rather than try to struggle and dump my kayak. It's very wavy.
<laughs> sick. That dry bag, that dry bag was for my uh, clothes and my sleeping bag, but priorities. If there's anything around the campsite, I'll walk around into the forest. Uh, and other than that, it's just gonna be me talking. So, if you hate that, now's your sign. Turn off the video. Turn it off, because there's not gonna be much more. In honor of uh, Jesse Brito not being able to make it, I'm drinking gin. Honestly, today was, I think, decent practice for uh, um, Jesse and mine's trip in uh, August. We're doing uh, Phillip Edward Island. It's like a Crown Land Island that's uh, just um, off of Killarney. We wanted to do uh, the Lacoche, Lacoche, Lacoche. We wanted to do a big hiking trail, um, and it was like 100 kilometers, and we've been planning to do it forever. Um, but stuff is, was so booked that we couldn't, it was like we could do it, but we would have to do like 35K a day. Like that's how the sites worked out. And obviously that's impossible. Um, so yeah, in the midst of like researching Crown Line in that area, I found Killar or, uh, Phillip Edward Island. And uh, we decided that we're gonna kayak it because like, it's like half of the, half of the trip is right on Georgian Bay. And it's a little bit sketchy to do that in a canoe. But also the downside is like, Jesse and I don't really kayak. The uh, was was good, especially when it's all windy and stormy like this, because the waves were big and it kind of gave me a sense of like, how far I could go, how, how fast I could go, sort of my limits. So now I'm just talking the whole time. You guys wanna, I can talk about my ax. I didn't bring it, because I have nothing to cut down. My ax is sick though. <laughs> it's a Gransfors Brook Scandinavian forest axe and it's like each um, each axe head is like stamped with they're like hand handmade and each axe head is stamped with the initials of the blacksmith that made it there's videos on YouTube of them being made and it's crazy I'm like <laughs> I have a sh champagne taste on like a beer budget but and that axe is like expensive it was like a top of the line axe but that is like the best decision like that you every once in a while you make a dumb impulse buy and it really works out <laughs> it it literally explodes the wood when you <laughs> and because it's I don't know maybe it's because I spent so much money maybe it's because it's so good but like I am like tied to this thing now like I I love taking care of it after every trip I'll come home and I'll uh, like clean it um, I sharpen it each time before I go out but when I come back I'll, I'll clean it um, I will cover the the head in oil, polish the, the handle with linseed oil, and just make sure, because I don't want that thing to ever go south on me. There's a lifetime warranty on the axe head, but like, I don't know. I just really like taking care of it. It's raining, by the way. That's why I'm in my tent. That's why I'm in my tent drinking gin. I honestly feel better struggling in the rain than I did sitting in my tent, so... It's like, at least I'm doing something. This will be fun, actually. I lost my fork, so I'll just carve one.
I should maybe move my tent to somewhere more sheltered, you know? <laughs> I had to do a bit of a, an emergency relocating uh, in the middle. Well, it's not that late. It's like 10 p.m. right now. Um, it was like light rain and then it got heavier, which is fine. And uh, I didn't even think when I was setting up my tent that like I'm at like the highest point with no tree coverage at the very tip of the water. And then like lightning started to crack down and I'm like, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move the. Uh, I'm gonna move the tent into the into the forest. Like uh, so I literally grabbed the tent and like I have everything in here, all my camera equipment and all my clothes and stuff. I just like took all the pegs out as quickly as I could and just like dragged it back as fast as I could. So now none of my clothes are dry. I had my one change of underwear <laughs> that was dry that I was wearing, and now it's just all soaked. Um, I have stuff hanging up, but yeah, it's really coming down. <laughs> See that? Listen. <laughs> 